Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a C++ standard template library map. Um, but I'm going to build it from a CSV file. CSV file is, of course, a comma-separated value file. I have a file that I acquired from Google's developers page of countries with a uh, country code, a latitude, a longitude, and a name. I have cleaned the file up a little bit. Uh, there was a title line that I deleted and the US minor outlying islands were in here with no latitude or longitude so I removed those. But this is a pretty typical setup. Now this information is going to work well for a map because I have a unique code and I have information to put into that particular map. So each one of these country codes is unique that will become my key and then this class will become my data. In a previous video I built this country class where I've got the string code, lat, long, and a name. I have all the normal setters and getters. And as I pointed out in the previous video, you must make sure you have these comparison operators built. All right, so let's make this happen. I've already got my correct pound includes. I'm going to. Do this in function. You should do everything in a function, right? Alright, so file name is countries.csv. Let's verify that. So yes, countries.csv. I know that it's in my data folder. So that's where I put all of my data. You may have issues with it being in a different location. If so, just put it in the same folder as the CPP file and delete the path. Okay, so inside of read file, we need a bunch of variables. Oops, I need an IF stream for input stream. So I'll open the file. I'm going to need a line. I'm also going to need a couple of things for the file. The delimiter is how you separate it. It's a CSV, a comma separated value, so I'm separating on commas. I'm going to have a token. I'll show you what that is in a minute. I need a size t variable called position equals zero. It's like a long int. Um, the find function I'm going to use will return a size t. I'm going to need a count eventually so I can walk through my particular file. I'm going to verify that my file opens. If I fail, I'm going to die. Even though you're controlling this, you should always test. Because weird things happen. Oh, I need an exit there. Remember that normal exit condition is zero. I choosing one for no file. Assuming it closes or works, we'll close. And let's see what happens. I'll put a little C out there. If I get there, I know it works. I want to make sure I've got my file structure correct. File is open. Okay, good. Um, for those who are unsure that that works, if I change the name of my file here, go to CS. I should get my the file done on open quitting error. I did. And you see the path passes in there. Okay. So, I'm opening my file. And I'm going to walk through my file one line at a time. I'm going to read my f each line into the string called a line. It, I'm going to break it up by delimiter using find and some erases. Uh, my token, as I walk through my string, each one of these will in turn be a token. I'll pull out the sections of the file and each one will become a token. And I'll use that token to put, to build my map. So let's get it to read and dump to the screen and then I'll populate the map. A couple things about your file before I move on. Try not to have anything above it. If you do, do some priming reads to get there. 
Uh, make sure it ends with no line below it. Weird things happen if there's an extra line below there. So I'll get the whole line using get line. Oops, not fine, fin. Too many E's there. And I'll build my country in here. I don't need it just yet, but I'll build my variable type country. And let's quickly see how to line. Make sure we're reading. I like doing these small little steps because bad things happen. My lines are coming in fine. Okay, I'm doing okay. I can also get rid of this line. So I know it's working. Okay, where to this? So I'm reading in. Okay, so now I need to walk through this. And I'm going to use it using modern string fit techniques. You can go back to Sturtalk, which you'll find online in Sturtalk S. Sturtalk is kind of old school. It's not overly secure. It's not thread safe. If you're here in Visual Studio and using Sturtalk S, that is thread safe. Um, but still, find is newer and nicer. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through my line one comma at a time. So I'm going to keep walking as long as until I find delimiters. And I'm not at the end of the position. And pause is no position, so until I can't find any more. What will occur? I'm going to do token. I'm going to go from the beginning of the line to the position. I'll display this token just for giggles and then I'm going to get rid of what I don't want. So I'm going to race from the beginning of the string to the position plus the length and delimiter. Now I could have just said one there because it's just a comma but sometimes you have really weird delimiters like comma space etc and this just makes sure that I go to the end of it. Run this thing, I should get each one of my lines. Okay, so almost. I'm not getting the country names. And the reason is because we look at your file. One, two, three. I don't have a comma here at the end. I could just simply throw a comma at the end of this and this would work fine, but I don't like to do that. I'm going to code it. If I go back and put this line back in here. I'm going to wave my hands and it's going to magically work. There they are. Country names are back. The reason that works is when I'm erasing here, I'm taking out the stuff I don't want. Once I get to no more commas, all that's left is the name of the country. So, let's now walk through it. I created a counter variable so I knew which particular section of the string I was in. And let's comment at the C out here. So I'm going to switch on counts. It's a really good idea when you start getting stuff inside of stuff inside of stuff. Comment at the ends of this stuff. So you know what you're closing. It takes you an extra second to comment those, so it saves you hours to do even later when you put something in the wrong place. So if I'm at zero in my switch, that's going to be the code. Case one is me latitude. I'm just setting my structure here. Um, 
case 0, 1, and 2 will work. There will be no case 3. I'll also just put a default in here just so I don't get yelled at. I'm not going to do anything with it. So inside a case, I'm going to have the code. Case one, which is latitude, that's the first column. I'm going to use string to double here. I'm taking a big gamble here that my strings are properly formatted. You just have to try to catch that, especially if you don't control the file. I built the file. Actually, Google built the file, and I pretty much trust them, and I managed it to make sure that it's clean. Um, likewise for longitude. And as I said, I'm ignoring the defaults. So we saw that I got lat, long, and code using the, del the delimiter. After the delimiter loop, a line held my object. So I'll add that to my country. So I've now built my country. And to prove that, I'll use my C, double SN operator that I built. Uh, this will show the country name and the location. There we go. Okay, lat long isn't working. Let's figure out why lat long isn't working. Ooh. All right, so lat long is working. The reason is I didn't properly deal with my counts. I need to make sure I do count plus plus here inside my while loop and after I add the country set count back to zero Let's see if that works mm -hmm. there we go I got lat longs again life is good I don't know how many times I've forgotten to reset something to zero and things don't happen so I had to add in my count plus plus that does my counting, so I'm going 0, 1, 2, etc. And then I reset my compact to 0. Okay, so we've read the file in. Let's now add it to my map. Maps, as you know, require a code, some type of unique value, and then data. So I've already pound included map, so let's add this. The first item inside the angle bracket for the template is the data type. My um, key will be code, which is a string. The second one is country. So now build a map for countries. The code, which is string, will be the key. The data type for country will come back. You should build these large data structures globally and avoid passing them around through functions. Weird things happen when we start passing these things by address. Because these are basically pointers, and you're passing a pointer to another pointer, and just it's just it's insane. Make them global. Make your life easy. So I now need to use that map down inside my code. I can get rid of my CL because I know it's working. Country ma or maps act like arrays. So I'm going to use my key here. So notice I got it inside the box just like you do an array. And I'll set it equal to the country. This is populating data into my map. And now after I close, let's see how big it is. Take a moment, make sure you take a look at all the cool functions we have with map. I'm going to use size. So 
So I should get 244. It's 244. How do I know it's 240? 244 because I can count. And I can RTFS. You should always though data or double check the amount of data you get in to make sure it matches. One of the hardest things you will do as a programmer is figure out which three lines don't work. Especially if you've got hundreds or thousands of lines of input. Okay, so it works. Let's now do something really simple with this. Alright? This is going to be perfect. It's a nice simple interface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search by code. Right, this should display Mexico. And it does. The reason that works, again, if you look at our original data, MX is Mexico. Any one of these should work. If you're not sure, test a couple. Go to Canada. How about if it's not there? How about if you go with Dos Equis? We should get zero, zero. Yeah, we get the blank country. The reason we get blank is because my default constructor for country sets the lat longs to zero. I can if that, I'm just not going to today. So let's do a nice simple interface. I'm going to ask the user for a country code, tell them how to quit. Now, lots can go wrong here. Give spaces in, numbers in, just keep it simple. I'm not going to do any Brenda checking here. Okay, so I should be able to run this and enter in whatever code I want, and I get my data back. Oh, enter country code. Let's do Vietnam. Let's do Mexico. Afghanistan. UK. What's well, Ukraine? I don't know what Ukraine is, but you see that it's working. UA. All right, I'm done. Quits. Boom, I'm out of there. Okay, so what you've seen is how to populate a map from a comma separated file. You've seen a simple interface. Um, this by no means is the only way to do this. These um, iterators that you're going to learn to work with in C++ and the standard template library have tools that will do this for you without having to write all this code. But I don't necessarily like showing the easy way all the time. You do have to struggle sometimes as a programmer. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. Good luck.